Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for the preview for this game. Chelsea versus Leicester, a must win, a absolute must win match. There is no conversation, no debating, no discussion about it. We need the three points. We need to respond. We need to bounce back from the defeat against Leicester. And I do feel like we will. As much as we are in a few of our own issues and we need to improve certain areas of our team and certain areas of our gameplay, Leicester are also going through it as well at the moment. They haven't even really made too many incoming transfers. And as we said on All You Can Eat Chelsea yesterday, we've kicked up quite the fuss for Fofana and that has caused unrest behind the scenes for them as well, which Rodgers does come out and confirm that he will not be in the squad for this game at Stamford Bridge, as expected as he wasn't for last week as well, as well as Madison also being unavailable. And for us, Koulibaly suspended and Kante is out for a month for Chelsea, a massive loss and cover also only able, it seems, to be able to play the 20 minutes, it would seem, for this match at maximum. Uh, Broya is back. Adam Newsom reports that. So let's get into all of the different departments. Obviously, Koulibaly is a massive loss in the back three if we are to play the back three again. I do feel like I expect us to play that with Silva obviously still being integral in the middle. Um, and maybe that means that someone like Kukurea would slot into the back three. If Chor was up to his max speed, up to his maximum, we would continue to be very attacking down that side with those two options, with Kukurea underlapping. Uh, and, and potentially even getting further forward than Chilwell, as I've discussed when we designed this player. And then Chilwell covering in transition. But I don't know if Chilwell's ready. I can't see. I went to an open training session this week. I didn't see Chili B too much. Um, so I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure just how up to match speed he is and how ready he is. Of course, we saw him um, a bit in pre-season. We saw that he played in the PL2 game. Didn't have the greatest game, apparently. But... Is he ready to come and start this match? I'm not so sure. We'll get to my lineup in just a second. Um, but when it comes down to Chelsea, this midfield issue that we have with Kante out for a month, he's going to miss a whole host of games. We're playing midweek next week and there's going to be Champions League, as you saw the draw yesterday. That is also coming up. He's going to miss some of those games. We can't continue to build our team around injury-prone players. They have to be a bonus, not the be-all and end-all of our aspirations. I've said it before. They cannot be integral pieces to the puzzle because they're not consistently available. And Kovacic goes straight into this category as well. They miss so many games. Last season, the season before. And when is it going to click in our brain that we can't rely upon these players? I remember this quote from Thomas Tuchel. He said, of course, Kante, if... If he's available, he is a Salah, a De Bruyne, a Van Dijk, a Mbappe in this team. However, it's tough to be that when you're only available for 40% of the games. And for me, that's why we have to bring in somebody because we know that he is not reliable from a fitness standpoint. And when you're not reliable from a fitness standpoint, it's very hard to be consistent from a performance standpoint because you're not in your rhythm. You're not going constantly. Now, be fair to him, he is probably one of the best players at playing after an injury in terms of just getting back to his level. But we're not seeing it consistently throughout the season from him or Cobber because they're not available um, on a consistent basis and they keep picking up these injuries. Otherwise, they would be in for player of the year shouts, you know, but obviously Cobber's picked up actually one under Lampard, but we haven't seen Kante lift that player of the year trophy or be in the reckoning for it for years because he's not available. Um, and we can't continue to have... Uh, a constant rotation and cycle in this midfield and then expect to see consistency um, in the heart of our pitch. It's just not going to happen. The two don't align. They don't go together. Liverpool are suffering from the same problems. They have many injury-prone midfielders and that's where you build your team around. You build your team around your midfield. That's the, the epicentre of everything that happens. That's where your build-up play starts. That's where some of your counter-pressing takes place. That's where you're expected to create opportunities as well and dominate the ball and control and overpower the opposition on and off the ball. And then the rest around it takes care of itself. A midfield can make its defence look a lot better if it's sturdy in front, if it's protected. A midfield can make its attack score even more goals if they create a high volume of chances like we see at Manchester City. The midfield is everything. Um, and for us right now, it is nothing. It is non-existent and it is it is faltering and, you know, withering, withering away um, constantly. And it, and it has been for ages. So this is something we have to rectify, people, because if we don't, um, in the remaining days of this window, it's going to be a very long season and um, the top four battle is getting tougher and tougher. And obviously, against Leicester here today, 
I'm here to talk about that attack as well. You know, Kai looks like he'll play, even though Broyer's just come back. I don't expect Broyer to just walk into this team um, off an injury. He'll probably need to be eased in, have more training sessions, maybe come on off the bench. Mason Mount, again, you're probably going to see Sterling again. And that is purely because the players behind them are unsettled. The hudson the Doys of this world is linked to a move to Bayer Leverkusen. That should be going through soon. Pulisic, there's definitely an unsettled player there. Ziyech, unsettled. So, I mean, Ziyech literally boarded a flight to Amsterdam straight after the Leeds game. So how many opportunities and how many how much game time do you really expect to give to players that potentially don't even want to be here? If you're Thomas Tuchel, you're probably going to stick with the players that are 100% committed and 100% want to be here and 100% part of your plans and suit your system more so than those wingers that we don't really play with in terms of the roles um, given out to the team. We know we don't really have out-and-out -out wingers on a consistent basis. So, yeah, it's tough. There's not much room to, you know, drop players or make them respond um, by benching them if they've had poor performances because we're working with a very select group that either fit the plan good enough and actually want to be here. You have to tick off those three things and not many players at the moment tick off those those things. For Mendy, on the other side of the pitch, I'm just hoping for a hell of a lot more, you know, safe play from him. I don't want to see you dilly-dallying on the ball too much. Yes, we play out from the back. But there is no crime, in my opinion, in finding that lofted long pass. Let's try and see some more of those clipped balls over the press and try and find those players at the wing-back positions if loftus cheat was to start over there again. We start using them as an outlet, you know, what, like we used to with Marcus Alonso. That's the one... One of the few things about Marcus Alonso that we was that I actually liked was we was able to to ping the ball to him aerially and he you know win the aerial duel guaranteed or he would take it down um, and we start the build up play from there. Loftus Cheek maybe could be used in a similar way if we're under pressure from a from a Leicester City press. You clip the ball over the top and then you find Loftus Cheek who's strong, big, and is able for me to, to body most fullbacks in terms of physicality. Um, hopefully win those aerial duels and then we we play from there get players around him, create those triangles and start build up play from there. Not always do we have to take that risky, risky pass um, in, in, in the lines of defence where Mendy right now is clearly not comfortable. Would you in the comments below bring Kepper into the team? Let me know. I personally, I would stick with Mendy because I do believe he's going to be our first choice goalkeeper throughout the season. Now, I understand the calls for Kepper because of course you want to maybe make it very clear to many that his performances need to improve and you want to give that fair chance to Kepa. But for me, when you bring Kepa into the team, you're only bringing in different problems and you're maybe taking away some problems, but you're putting in more or putting in others. And for me, that's not an upgrade. That's just, you know, a rotation of, 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 of problems. And I'm not trying to do that personally because... Last time I remember us playing Leicester in the FA Cup final, Tienemans was shooting from range. And we know Kepa, in terms of reaching the high upper echelons of the of the net, is not, not the best. Um, and, you know, like I said, collecting crosses, set pieces. Madison, luckily, is not here to deliver those, but sure somebody else will be on those. And, and that's not something I want to see either, is him trying to dominate in that box. So... It's, it's not easy. I mean, he did deputise well for Mendy when he was out um, for AFCON. But again, I just don't I don't really feel he's first choice, you know, first choice quality. But maybe in the comments, you'll disagree. But in saying that, Mendy does have to step it up because otherwise we will have no choice but to take him out if his performances continue to be problematic for us. But I would hope that the goalkeeping coaches have had a word with him, spoken to him and said, listen, you need to you need to sort this side of your game out. Either you need to keep it safe or you need to start training on this part of your game in terms of the ball playing ability and start learning how to receive the ball under pressure and start making decisions a lot quicker than you do and don't dilly-dally on the ball. Um, so, so that's one side of it. Do we bring maybe Loftus-Cheek into the pivot with, with, with Jorginho? I'm not a massive fan of Loftus-Cheek in a pivot, but I definitely think he's got the characteristics to do a better job at the moment than Gallagher is in terms of having the strength to put your body behind um, the ball and actually shield it and actually be a little bit more press resistant. Hopefully his experience from last season would have helped him with his scanning and, and in terms of just understanding the, the, the immense press that he could pick up in that area. But will it be as strong as Leeds' his press anyway? Probably not. So there's a, there's definitely a side to say we should move him in there and push Reese James to right wing back. But when you have Bally missing, that's the left side centre back already being switched. Do you want to switch the right side centre-back as well? Maybe Aspilicueta comes in. Where's Trevor Chaloba gone? What happens with him? 
it's tough. It's really tough with these with these certain individuals missing, man. But I'm going to put out my team and then I'm going to follow up with Ben Jacobs' Leicester team as well. Unfortunately, we couldn't quite get the collab in because a train was delayed. But we will get him on the channel next week um, and we'll talk extensively about Fafana, I'm sure, and other transfer news as we come into the last couple of days and deadline day is not far away. Um, but my team, for me, I'm sticking with Mendy and goal. However, like I said, let me know in the comments down below if you would bring Kepper in um, for this match. For the back three, I'm bringing Trevor Chaloba back into the team. Even though he's linked with moves to Inter Milan and RB Leipzig on loan, I do still feel like his head is at least still with us, unlike some of the other players potentially. And that all depends on Fofana and that is still not done. So I still believe Trevor Chaloba can come in and put in that performance. And I'm actually going to put him on left side centre back where he used to play at Lorient on loan in Ligue 1. And then Silva and then Aspilicueta with Reese James back out to right wing back. I know it's tough to move all those centre backs and move them in and out. But I don't know Chilwell's current status in terms of just how ready he is. That's why Kukurea for me goes left wing back. Reese James goes right wing back. For me, those are our two strongest players in those positions going forward at the moment. And wing backs are very integral to the way we go forward at the moment. It just is how it is. Um, Loftus Cheek goes into midfield with Jorginho in that pivot. Mason Mount just ahead again, has to step up his performance now. Been a bad couple of weeks for him, for Kai, but like I said, those other attackers behind are they really in the right mindset to come into this game and make serious impacts? I don't really think so. So Sterling and Kai go up top. And as Kai said in his interview there with Sky Sports, he was talking about potentially, you know, playing up front. He's played in 10. He's played on wing. For Kai, you know, we do need to see some finishing. We do need to see some goals. But also for him as well, we just need to see a good all, you know, overall game, which is what he was talking about. Not being too wrapped up in the statistics because there's sometimes where a player will have a goal, have an assist, but actually have a poor game. We want good performances. That's the key here for Kai. And when you get, when, once you get good performances, hopefully that translates in statistics. But the be all and end all is good performances. And if everybody has a good performance, then we should win the game. And then whoever gets the goal, whoever gets the assist gets it. Um, but for his own confidence, it would be nice for him to get a goal as well as a good performance. Um, and Sterling as well, definitely would be nice for him to get a goal. Let's put Ben Jacobs' team up here as well. This is the Leicester team um, that he's expecting, predicting to see against us. They have good players. We do need to be wary. Yes, they haven't had the brilliant start to the season. Yes, there is a little bit of a downward trajectory on that team in terms of their recent years. A um, lot of injuries last year as well. Rogers temp potentially some people say could be coming towards the end of his time there but they still have quality players that you have to watch out for and this is the Premier League we do not and should not be taking anybody lightly after what happened last weekend so hopefully regardless we should be able to get the win people and take advantage of any unrest that they have behind the scenes as well but like I said um, Leicester have caused a lot of issue for us over the years I remember that was the last game that Frank Lampard came up against before he was sacked the 2-0 defeat at um, King Power, if people remember. Also the FA Cup final, where we lost that as well. Tielemans long shot, they won the FA Cup. So there is there, there should be no sleeping on Leicester. They, they've caused us enough aggro over the years. And we should be rising to the challenge and trying to take advantage of, like I said, any unrest. But let me know in the comments what you think of my team. Let me know what you think of Ben Jacob's team as well, of course, journalist, but also Leicester fan. And also let me know what you think of all the topics that I've raised in terms of Kante, cover, reliability, um, the need for someone in midfield, but also, of course, the forward area. Not really having much competition numerically, we do, but in terms of mindset, probably not. And all the other things discussed. Big up your damn selves. Make sure you smash up the icons in a bit, people. Peace.